Okay, Vezat Hashem. Today we're going to learn in Perkei Avot, Perkei Mishnah Chaf. Very interesting Mishnah. Generally, when it comes to bad midot, we're not meant to engage in bad midot. We're not meant to have parts of those things in our character. We have to get rid of bad midot. So, for example, if somebody has kas within him, anger, he has to work on himself. Get rid of it. Somebody has, uh, he's a Baal Ta'ava. Natural. People have Ta'avot. Okay. So we work on ourselves. We get better at it. This Mishnah teaches us something amazing. That there's a Midah, which is called Azut. Azut Panim. Azut Panim is a Midah that is generally not looked at in a positive way. Generally, it's negative. Not good. But as we'll see in this Mishnah, a chilek of it, in a certain way, is not just not bad, but it's necessary. You need to use it in order to really accomplish a full melechet shamayim. The Mishnah tells us here something fascinating. Midot, there's, there's always an element of something perhaps, most of the midot, even something that looks negative, that has some positive usage. And so the Mishnah tells us as follows, Mishnah Chaf. Yehuda ben Tema Omer, one of the most famous Mishnayot actually in Perkei Avot. Eliezer, you can come here if you want. Yehuda ben Tema Omer, Yehuda ben Tema says the following. Heve az kanamer. One should be az kanamer. What is namer? In English, it's generally translated as a leopard. Leopard. You know what a leopard is? You've been to the zoo? Leopard is, a, is in the cat family. I'll tell you what the Tosvot Yom Tov says about this in a minute. He says it's not exactly a leopard. But one should be az. Az means harsh. Or strong. Difficult. Like a leopard. Now, azut is not a good thing usually. In a certain way, you should be az kanamer. What does it mean? Az means harsh. It means brazen. That's what it means. Brazen is the word they use in English, actually. It's almost like... Um, in a negative sense, chas is like going against Hashem, but that's not what it means here, obviously. Brazen? Brazen. Brazen. It means like we shameless. Are a shameless. Oh, thank you, thank you. Shameless. The opposite of boshet. The opposite. Az is the opposite of boshet. Boshet is that is shame. Not having shame. They should la- Lacking shame like a leopard. Continue. Chutzpah? Like chutzpah, like chutzpah, exactly. Thank you. The kal kanesher, and quick... Like a Nesher is translated usually as an eagle. Virat Katsvi, and he should run like a deer, quick like a deer. The Gibor Kari, and powerful, mighty like a lion. La Asot Ritzon Avicha Shabashamayim, to fulfill the will of your, your father in heaven. Meaning, when it comes to serving Hashem, there's a place to use these character traits. In his service, meaning in the service of Hashem, we need to be az, we need to be kal, we need to use the character traits for serving Hashem in the most proper way. Now we're going to have to see in a minute, well, when is azut, how is it used properly? But you have to use the service of serving Hashem with all of your energy. In order to show that that's not the ideal, continues the Mishnah, Uwa Yaomer, Yudab ben Tema also used to say, Az panim li Somebody that is az panim, again, brazen, or not shamefaced, where does he go? To Genom. Uboshet panim le Gan Eden. And somebody that has shame on his face, he goes to Gan Eden. The Gemara tells us in Mesechet Yivamot that there are three character traits that mark a Jew that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave to show the character traits of a Jewish person. And one of them is he is Baishanim. Jewish people are Baishanim. Our natural disposition is that we have shame. Shame is not a bad thing. Shame is a good thing. So we have Boshet Panim. The Psukim say, the whole Maaseh of Har Sinai, we just learned about it, instilled shame and instilled awe on our faces. And that is something that prevents us from sinning in the future. So this idea, Boshet Panim, is a tremendous thing. Azut, though, is not necessarily a tremendous thing. And actually the Mishnah is saying, somebody that has boshet panim, he won't sin quickly. And since he won't sin quickly, it's natural that he'll go to Gan Eden. Versus somebody that has azut panim, such a person, you wanna, don't worry, I can kick him out if you want me to kick him out, don't worry. 
yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't sure if you were busy. Azut panim, somebody that has azut, somebody has this midah of azut, such a person naturally will go to Geno because it's a bad character trait. So before we even continue, no, let's finish the Mishnah and then we'll speak out. Amazing thing the Mepharshim say here. The Mishnah, the Mishnah finishes off with a tefillah, which is not the natural thing that Mishnayot do. Mishnah finishes off, Yehirat son mefanecha Hashem elokeinu velokei avoteinu, it should be your will, Hashem, our God, and the God of our forefathers, Shetivne ircha b'meirav yameinu, that you rebuild your city, Yerushalayim, soon in our days, v'ten chalkeinu b'toratecha, and you give us a portion in your Torah. Now that seems to be very much out of place. We just talked about Azut, and now we're saying a prayer that the Beit Yerushalayim should be rebuilt, so we have to understand this now. Now, just as a side point, fascinating thing, Tosafot Yom Tov says something even more interesting than your cell phone. The Tosvot Yom Tov says, what is a Namer? Namer, a leopard. Yeah. Usually we translate Namer as leopard. Yeah. But Tosvot Yom Tov says, Namer, it's fascinating. He says, Namer is the product born of a female lion and a wild pig. That's what Tosvot Yom Tov says. I don't know how this is possible, but he says it's the product... Monster? It's usually, like a monster. Usually the, the lion eats the pig. You know? <laughs> the lion, the, I mean, now, now you, lion king has an entirely new meaning to me. Is it Hamas? Is it Hamas? Hamas pig, no? <laughs> says, when the female lion is in heat, when it wants to have uh, relations, so the, if the, if the <coughs> wild pig has relations, this is born, and it's like a mamzer. Basically, it's a mamzer. It doesn't have the, the power of a lion, but it pretends like it's like a lion. So it's a certain chutzpah that's associated with this creature. So you should have azut like that namer, like that leopard. I just thought that was fascinating. So, so, you know, Rovani Bartanura says that anyways. All right, whatever. But back to the story at hand here. We're saying in the Mishnah that in general, azut is a negative thing, but there's parts that are good. So we have to understand under what circumstances is azut considered a good thing harshness or chutzpah. When is chutzpah a good thing? When is chutzpah used in Avodat Hashem and it's a very valuable thing? Pursuit of Torah. Oh, so, so, yeah, what do you say? What do you say? There's many, the Mepharshim speaking. through the, the difficulties of learning. What is it? Meaning, meaning what? How's, how's that azut? How do you use, it's, it's chutzpah, it's the opposite of shame. Yeah, be able to ask questions. What's that? Azul ask questions. Oh, <coughs> asking questions. Beautiful. Asking question is not Azul. No, he's right. He's right. So Rabbi Vadim Asking question is Azul. Hold on, listen. Yehuda's right. Af Atah so says... Ra- nice question. Listen. Yehuda is always right, but Azul is not... Shema, Gever, Shema. Your question Rabbi is... Rabbi Vadim Bartanura says example. like this. Af Atah have az ve'al titbayesh lish'ol mirabcha ma'asha lo evanta. You should be harsh. You should be chutzpah. Use it. If you don't understand something, ask your Rebbe, I don't understand. <laughs> like we learned, somebody that has shame and he's too embarrassed to ask a question, he won't learn. So that's using azut in the right way. Like you just said, what was Lashon you just said? Azut Dusha. What's this idea of azut Dusha? Rebbe. What, what is it? Yeah. It's an example. against Hashem said, so he's saying there's examples in history where there was something. It was a sword to do something. But use it for and put down the so Yocha, beautiful. Yocha is adding is that there's another example in history, Rebbe. We find Rabbi Yudah Nasi, he understood that even though you're not meant to write down Torah Shabbat Peh, you're not allowed to write down, you're not allowed to write, it's Asur actually. Torah Shabbat Peh is Baal Peh. It has to be only oral tradition. You can't write it down. But he understood if we don't write it down, we're going to forget Mishnayot, Chas V'Shalom. We're going to forget Torah. And Eit Lasot Lashem, he said it's necessary. Feiru Torah Techa, Kibi Azif. And he wrote it down. Beautiful. All this good is good, but I yeah. don't understand why, what that comes with Azut. Azut is using. Azut is. Uh, what is Azut? Kutzpah. So that's exactly right. But that's not Kutzpah. It is. I don't understand. It's going. Something, and I'm asking you nicely. Please say it again. So, so let me explain to you. Not the opposite. Unless I go. Wah, wah, wah. The not opposite kutzpah. of Azut is Boshet. So boshet would mean I'd be embarrassed. you're shy to ask. Yeah. Azut means you're not shy to ask. 
Boshet would mean, I can't write down the Mishnayot. Azut means, I need to. Because you're not shy to ask, but for others it is. Right, maybe maybe you're Israeli, so it's a bit different, I don't know, you could say. Some people like, Well, you need to ask if you don't understand something, and I want them to explain it. For some people it is. What, what kind of zoot is yeah. you're not going to another one. another one. What's another one? Another example. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. This is, I believe the Rambam says this idea. Beautiful. He says, like it says, Imikesh Titapal, is that when it comes to, if the Rambam says this one, one second, the Rashi. So somebody says that shot also. Bad manner, that's chutzpah, that's the word of chutzpah. Ah, here, it's the Rambam. The Rambam says like Yehuda just said, another example of chutzpah that's necessary. He says, the Mishnah is telling you, you need to use this midah in some part. Like it says in Shmuel Bet, it says, When you deal with people who are tricky, undermined in the wrong thing, you can't deal with them straight. Because if you deal with them straight, they're not acting with you straight. Yeah. So in a certain way, you have to deal with them with Azut a little bit. So Ela that the point he says is, is that that's another example. You deal with undermined people. With a crook. With a crook, you have to also deal with them a little yeah. bit of an undermined yeah. way. Yeah. I saw the Mepharshim add another layer. If you see people doing the wrong thing, there has to be a certain Azut. You go over to them and tell them, you're doing the wrong thing. Tochacha. Takes a little bit of azut. It's not so comfortable. Maybe people are shy. You see, obviously, it has to be done in the right way. But the point is, you use the mitah of azut in the avodat Hashem, in the service of God. That's actually appropriate. But the Mishnah is saying, nonetheless, it shouldn't. That's how the, the Rambam speaks this out. Actually, it has to be. You're only using it for that reason but not that you're using it because be'etzim you have that bad character trait. Because otherwise, if you continue to use this midah in the places you're allowed to, what could end up happening is it affects you and it becomes part of your character, and then eventually you become chas v'shalom az panim, which is a bad thing. So it needs to be very controlled in the environment that's necessary, when the situation requires it, but not that it affects your character, making you to a person that has azut panim. Now regarding the end of the Mishnah, there was a tefillah. To be your will Hashem, that you rebuild your city and you give us a portion in your Torah. What does that have to do? So I saw the Mepharshim speak out, a few of them speak out a similar idea. We have to realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us a tremendous bracha. What is that bracha? The bracha is, we are born with the, the character traits of our avot. We have, we're Baishanim, we're Rachmanim, and we're Gomlei Chasadim. In the, in the soul of a Jew, in the nature of a Jew, we are Baishanim, we have shame. We're Rachmanim, we have mercy. We're Gomlei Chasadim, we want to do kindness. We are born with a predisposition. We have a natural tendency to want to do these things. Okay, we can act wrong and then it affects our character, and then there's a lot of schmutz on the outside. But Be'etzem, Hashem gave us a step up. Hashem gave us a tremendous bracha. So what we're saying to, the Mishnah is saying is, Rabbi Yudavan Tema is saying, just as you gave us that bracha, the ability to have this predisposition to doing good, please, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's finishing off with a prayer also, give us your city, Yerushalayim, and give us a portion of your Torah. It's, we appreciate that bracha, give us this other bracha, Be'ezat Hashem. Amen. 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 Amen.